Damen und Herren, herzlich willkommen in Berlin. ...diplomaten umzubringen, vor allem gläubige Dienstschaften zu schließen. In Potsdam haben hunderte Menschen den Fang verhindert. Mit Sitzblockaden blockieren sie die Strecke. Gegen den Aufmarsch gibt es gleich mehrere Gegendemos. Mit einem Fest unter dem Motto Potsdam bekennt Farbe, will sich die Stadt gegen Rechtsextremismus und Fremdenfeindlichkeit zur Wehr setzen. Bundesverbraucherminister bei der Landtagswahl in Bayern nächstes Jahr im Herbst wird es in einem eigenen Stimmkreis kandidieren, sagte Eigner heute in Ingolstadt. Bayerns Ministerpräsident Seehofer freut sich über die Rückmeldung. Danke. Das ist, glaube ich, ein Yeah, man. I'm driving the car and twittering all the time on the Autobahn. That's, the, that's how my life is like on tour every day, every day, every day. Let's say each Friday, each Saturday, like 20 years. DJ Tomek's on the road 20 years. We have been on the road on the big as tour bars with the Boogie Down Berlin crew, like 12, 12 nightliner with, with like 12 beds, like with the whole crew. Um, and now I'm at the point where I'm. With, with a little, you know, with a with SUV on the car, with a little crew, with just like, you know, the basic, the basic crew, and I love it. I love it. It's just great, and, 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 you know, we're having a good time. Boogie Down Berlin is always about having a good time, about the positive vibration, about the spirit of the music. It's about how the music heals people. So we go places, and we make people happy, like give people some, kind of like you know like a good feeling good vibrations positive vibrations we go to clubs and personally I think a club is a very very good place where um, where people go to um, get to know each other a club would be a place where a girl and a boy go to get to know each other so I'm very thankful for my profession as a DJ because my job is to create a surrounding with music create a surrounding way they're allowed to um, to get closer and it's a uh, it's a lot of energy it costs a lot of energy like spinning records making people happy costs a lot of lot of energy this is not some you know shit that is like you, you know just calm I mean this is like to be successful you really got to put your heart into it means every time I spin and I want the crowd to get on my level. I have to be one with the crowd spiritual. And it's this is fucking hard work. It's not it's not it's no joke. It's no joke. Um, it's a very, very hard work. A lot of entertainers get you know hooked on, on, on drugs, on alcohol, because it costs so much energy and it's a very, very, very tough job. This shit is no joke. Um, my key to surviving is the acceptance of you know that God has made that's what God has made me for you know to bring joy to the people to bring you know the yeah the joy to the people the, the pleasure to the people and um, and this is why I accept that um, you know I live on a, a tour you know And of course, um, yeah, it's a long time. I mean, 20 years in the game is a very, very long time. I started very early. I started at 15. Um, actually, it was always my dream to be a DJ since um, um, since I'm seven years old. Okay, that's how it, that's how it went down. I was in Poland, um, and you know, the border was closed. Like there was the Cold War. So Poland, in Poland, you would have no access to Western media. So uh, so. Uh, My, my father who was in Germany he sent the Bravo and in the Bravo there's a big like the youth newspaper they had this article on Tim Simon bomb the base Tim Simon and Tim Simon said like yeah like I tape my own little snippets to uh, to uh, and mix them like on tape um, and to make my own pieces of music and I thought wow by the time I read I was like wow this is what I want to do I was like probably seven years old and I knew like this is what I want to do next day I went out to a store and bought little letters uh, they say uh, little letters like little letters that you put on things like when you when you when you write something and I and I wrote recording studio on my desk while I was seven years old see seven years old and it was my dream to have a recording studio um, and 
man, I went to Germany when I was 11, I moved from Poland to Germany, went through very, very tough times, you know, learning a different language and, you know, being one of the cats that, you know, has got no money and like is, has got no friends and all this shit. I have been through some rough times and I always sticked to my dream, you know, my dream of, you know, being a DJ one day. That was kept me alive, basically. And I wasn't allowed to because my father used to beat the shit out of me. Like my father was a, you know, heavy drinker. So he would come home every night and beat the shit out of me. Like, yo boy, you know, blah, blah, blah. like, you know, and, and try to push me forward to um, do some like lawyer shit or some doctor shit or whatever. But my father passed when I was 15. And um, I, uh, I was allowed to stay in Germany. My mom, my mom's allowed me to stay in Germany, and 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 uh, I came. I, I I was I grew up in something they call the Kinderheim. That is, you know, where like the kids live like together and stuff, you know, and the and the state, you know, takes care of them. And it was a very very good good time because the people in the Kinderheim they used to let me like do my practice or so used to do all kinds of mixtapes like for everybody in the Kinderheim like everybody had a DJ Tomic mixtape I used to do mixtapes all day you know what I did is, is I put like like some 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 I darkened, I, I darkened my windows like put some aloe foil into it so I would have no light in my room so I would live in the disco and I and I put a put a you know like a black light like you would have in the disco and I you know change my room in the disco so I would live in my own you know disco and yeah man I started off doing mixtapes in the kinda high for everybody and passing away mixtapes then of course I was you know DJing at school parties like you know for my class and you know for the school and I was like when when we was at school like there was like who want to DJ I was like yeah I want to DJ I want to DJ you know and and um, actually the first Technic turntables was so expensive I used to uh, I used to uh, I didn't have money to do, to, to do that so I also you know I, I was very interested into hip-hop culture so I also used to do graffiti so I won some of graffiti comp some graffiti competitions and also used to airbrush t-shirts and sell them in school I had NWA t-shirts that I was airbrushing and Tim Dog t-shirts that say Tim Dog fuck up and NWA fuck the police and I sold this, those t-shirts in school this is how I got my first turntables and after I got this turntables, you know, I was practicing all day, like eight hours, like for many years I was practicing eight hours a day, like I was really getting on my, on my, you know, people's nerves and shit, you know, but hey, they liked it. I mean, in the Kinderheim, they just, you know, let me do it. And I'm very thankful for that because, you know, I was going to school and, and, and they just let me do my thing. It, as long there was, they was pretty cool with that. They was like, yo, as long as you go to school, you can work. I had like three different jobs. I was working at the record store, packing records. I was working at the hotel, washing up at nights. <laughs> and, the, and, and also at the cemetery on, on flowers and shit. So I had my three jobs and, you know, and, and I wanted to have so many records as I can because you know this days was when the records was out you know no Serato no computers it was all about records and turntables and so I had a very very small room in the Kinderheim and and it was full of records I was living in my disco spinning my school parties you know and and hey that's the life I mean that's it started when I was 15 when I was 16 I got my first professional job it was at a club it's called the Kalabash right now it's in Berlin Berlin wall just came down and um, and they had a lot of houses that they uh, that, that 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 people just would go in and do like you know just sell you know sell drinks and and, and just put a DJ in there. So I had my first job in, in this club. I was earning 80 marks a night. I had to spend 40 marks on the taxi, so I still, you know, kept had had something for myself. But it wasn't about making money. It was about, you know, just to get about to get out there and to spin. This is all I wanted. And yeah, man, I, I was I was doing my thing, like you know, practicing eight hours. As it was all about life, was all about practice. I didn't really care too much about girls. Actually, I wanted to be a DJ. 
because I mean one of the reasons was that in the Kinderheim like most of the guys that was living there was either selling women or selling drugs like the most women was making some money on the side with prostitution they I mean it's, it's nothing that you know it's it's like it's something when you live when you when you when you kind of grow up on the street that's something you know you get connected to like you know there's these girls you know learn how to make money with their pussy at the age of 15 16 and the boys help them you know they just help them take care of their arrangements and you know take you know take care of the safety and I wasn't feeling too comfortable with that since I was you know shy or whatever so I was you know I was like not feeling too good in this in this direction and also a lot of you know guys was like selling weed I, I didn't you know I didn't I, I picked up my first joint when I was 24 years old so uh, so I did I didn't know have no connection to that what I knew is that selling drugs will get me in jail so so uh, you know I was trying to trying to uh, take a route that would uh, that would allow me to make my living and get a social standing and you know have a life without getting in jail you know that was it it was not about the money it was about you know some kind of surviving of course man the love like you know the best feeling is like when you're on stage and you're one with your crowd and you know the crowd like loves you just like your heart is connected to the heart of your crowd that's like the best feeling and man i mean hey they say you know they say uh, music gets you high and when you're on stage it gets you high and yes that's true when I'm on stage when I'm doing my thing I get such an adrenaline rush and I get such a you know such you know you know posit positive like hormones and shit man this is like the purest feeling like like one of the purest feelings that you know I know and Yes, and 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 um, it's my 20th anniversary this year, man, and, and 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 I'm still doing it. I'm still doing it. I had times when I didn't want to do this shit because, also, you know, in the meanwhile, I had a lot of success. I earned a lot of money. I saw the other sides of this whole shit. Like I was kidnapped twice. I got stabbed five times. I like lost two families. You know. But I accepted that this is what God has made me for and this is the reason I'm in this car today going to my show right now and you know and accepting it accepting it and I love my life I love God I'm very thankful you know that God has given me the ability of entertaining people you know of entertaining people of you know reaching their heart you know and, and and i'm very very thankful that the you know that the, that the that the crowd is open and they you know come to my shows i mean it's been 20 years in the game and you know the club is still packed you know i didn't do a record since i don't know five years seven years or whatever i just go to clubs i mean i do records but i didn't like release that like release none records like in the last years since since you know i was you know you know, working in the studio a lot and and, 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 and and try to step my game up like the production game, the, the instrument game because you know also parts of the producer job is like you have to know how to write songs, you have to know how to play an instrument so you can do your beats, you have to know how to program, you have to know a lots of shit so actually yeah I was learning, I was learning, I was you know uh, really really uh, really really spend a lot of time with learning and uh, you know also I'm a father of, of two beautiful kids that are very very I love so uh, yeah of course every time a child is born you know you want to spend some time with your kid um, actually also the kids have stepped my game up because I learned that when 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 especially with the with, the, with my second kid I learned how to go to job and go home and like not do like to be really really professional because when you have kids you know time is very very important time and you, you want to spend the most of the time with your kids you know it's a lot of fun and, and, and it's beautiful and it's crazy and 
So I learned at this stage of my career, I learned how to, you know, jump on a car, drive 500 kilometers, do a two hour show, jump in the car, drive back home and take care of my shit, you know? And yeah, man, it's been a tough road and it's been 20 years and I'm still here and I'm still rocking and you rocking with DJ Tomek, bring it down Berlin, ooh, ooh, yeah. Willkommen in Berlin.